Hello there, this is uh, a new thing for me to do. I, I meant to do it for my last book and I hadn't um, got round to it because you tend to get a bit busy when you're writing and drawing comic books. But this time, and let's see if I manage to keep up with it, I'm going to be doing a how to do or how not to do, depends entirely what you think of my working method, uh, writing and drawing a graphic novel because I completed this graphic novel in uh, the first week of February and because of the COVID-19 uh, coronavirus virus crisis, which has affected my printer, um, not, not my domestic printer, I mean the guy at Citrus Design who are printing the actual books, who've got uh, hundreds of copies of books supposed to be coming out of the printer, uh, they've been delayed by a month and so all of the lovely kind people who uh, put money into the Kickstarter campaign to pay for the printing of the book, they're still waiting to get their books. Uh, there's uh, I think a couple uh, existing in the world. This is a version that I got printed by Blurb, so it's slightly the wrong shape and the version that you can get online from Amazon is the correct shape. It's a paperback a book. Anyway, I'm not making this simple am I? I did a book in January, it should be available now, it is available on Amazon Print and Demand and the versions that I'm having printed myself will also be available. It's called Finley Macbeth and then the coronavirus thing struck so what I normally do which involves a lot of going out to schools to do comic art masterclasses and also doing my comedy show the Scottish Falsetto Sock Puppet Theatre all that suddenly stopped meaning I like you am shot at home indoors as a result of which I decided there was nothing else for me to do but to do a second book. So while most people are still waiting for their copy of the first book Finley Macbeth available now on Amazon I have begun a second book. My second book is called uh, The Prince of Denmark Street and it's an adaptation of Hamlet. Now, a little bit of background on me. Some of you will have heard of me. If you used to go to the Comic Festival in Bristol from 1999 to 2004, I ran that or I started it and then I was one of the people who ran it. Thank you, Mike, and all the other people who helped me with that. Uh, I have written and drawn for loads and loads of comics. I'm most famous for writing for the Beano. Uh, you still see my work in Beano annuals. Uh, I did a lot of strips in the 2000s, uh, doing things like Bash Street Kids Adventures. And if you look in the Beano Annual 2007, 2008, 2009, you'll find long stories written and drawn by me. Uh, and Billy the Cat versus General Jumbo, drawn by the wonderful Nigel Dobbin, uh, which is one of the, my favourite scripts. Anyway, I've written and drawn a lot of comics for a long time, about 30 years I've been writing and drawing comics. I know, you wouldn't believe it was possible, would you? Uh, keep the camera a long way away, a long way away. Uh, I, though, have most recently been working for, of all people, Bible Society. Uh, Bible Society have commissioned me, and uh, they're wonderful, they pay nicely, uh, commissioned me to do my own humorous adaptations of Bible stories. This is uh, one of my favourites, uh, Joseph. Um, I could do clever jiggery pokery, sort of putting the pictures on screen properly, couldn't I? But instead, if I just hold them up to the camera, you can pretty well see what I'm doing here. Uh, humorous uh, three panel adaptations, uh, which then build up into the whole great big long story. I've done the book of Esther, I've done the book of Ruth, if you'd like a 12 page graphic novel on inheritance law. I've done Yale Wife of Heber, that's a particular favourite of mine, and a Rahab the Prostitute. A target audience is 8 to 15. Uh, anyway, I've been doing these Bible stories. Uh, there's my version of the Nativity. We've got about 120 pages of these. They're sort of asterisk book uh, format and style. But because publishing is a very complicated business, uh, Bible Society are still working on getting that book released, working on the market, working on the price of it. So it's not available. You can't get it in your hands yet. We, we have some sample versions like this, which have been circulated around schools and places. I was in, so enjoying doing this uh, and so looking forward to having a book out so that basically, you know, I could say to everybody, no, this is what I do. Never mind trying to look for old beanos that you can't find. I, I actually do comics and you can get them in your hand. You can go to your bookshop. I, I, I long, you know, to do signings outside Waterstones and have people uh, picketing my sacrilegious adaptations of Bible stories. They're not and they'll love them. Uh, but point is, that's not happened yet. Uh, so my uh, Joseph is still waiting to be seen. So. 
at the end of 2019, because December's quite a quiet month for a lot of the work that I do, once I've designed everybody's Christmas cards and done the last comic art masterclasses and the last comedy shows, uh, comedy shows pretty well wind up for December, and then you just do uh, corporate events, which um, are a subject for another time. Anyway, December's quiet, and so I wrote and drew a book. I wrote and drew Finley Macbeth. Finley Macbeth is 110 pages long, and it, then, it, as well as having the 120 page uh, graphic novel adaptation of Macbeth, the Scottish play, uh, my own adaptation. It's not so much a humorous adaptation as um, what I call a comedy thriller, is, is how my story has come out. Uh, think of it as Abigail's Party meets, uh, meets the Scottish play. So that is the book. Uh, uh, Finley Macbeth, and at the back of the book you also get the full text of uh, Shakespeare's play with illustrations by me. So I did that, I thought I'd do a, a video diary like this, I didn't, and gosh don't people ramble when they do these videos, I'm awfully awfully sorry. Right, I'll get on with it now, I'm doing the new book and the new book is called uh, the Prince of Denmark Street, and it's my adaptation of Hamlet. Um, again, I'll just start showing you this by holding things up in front of the camera, and then you'll see some work as it goes along. So if you're fast forwarding through this, fast forward this bit where I go off screen. Uh, did I edit it out? That's the sort of sneaky thing I do. This is stage one. I began um, as the crackdown started in March. Uh, March the 14th is when I did my last uh, comic art masterclass and that was about the time that I had the idea of writing a book. I rejected a couple of ideas, a version of King Lear set in a sort of corporate business environment and um, my version of The Merchant of Venice and I've got a, a nifty idea for how I'll do that if I get round to doing that. But the story I went for was The Prince of Denmark Street. So, how to write and draw comics. Lots of people have ways of writing and drawing comics. The most popular way, I think, is for one person to write a script, doing a full type script like you would do for a film or a TV show or a radio show, and then passing that on to an artist who takes your type script and breaks it down into panels. I've done that for other artists to do, and I have worked from scripts like that myself in the past. But most commonly, I write and draw my own work. Um, there's lots of artists whose style I prefer, and that's why it's great to write scripts to have someone else draw. But when I write and draw my own things, I begin with a scribble. I begin with a very, very rough scribble. This is just a, a tiny snippet of what some of that rough scribble looks like. Um, these brief garbled thumbnails where I'm getting the ideas down and thinking, oh, that might, visual image might look quite good. And then a bit more of a detailed breakdown like this. I mean, th this is me writing. As I go along, I'm writing the words and I'm doodling the pictures all in one go. And then, having done the scripts that way, I break the whole structure of the book down into a very long and boring grid, which looks like that. There is the long and boring grid, where I work out, I number all the panels, I break them down into pages, and then I draw the whole book out as rough pencil sketches. Oh, no. First thing, I type all the voice bubbles onto the page. So I produce a series of blank pages with voice bubbles on. Even though I know what's supposed to be in the pictures, I put the words on the paper first. And so I will get pages that look like this. There you go. That is a pretty typical page. Uh, well, that one doesn't have any words in it. I'm not entirely sure what happens in that picture. Uh, probably got a lot of sound effects and a close-up. But the words appear in the voice bubbles, and then I go in the pencil and I doodle. I do them for this book A5 size, so um, approximately the size that they will appear in print. So I'm drawing these things actual size to try and 
keep it alive, keep it fresh. Now, a lot of these are very rough. Uh, the characters don't look like the characters will look. That face will certainly not come out looking like that in the finished item. But that's it, I doodled the whole book in that way until I have got this. This, printed over 60 pages of paper, is a 110 page book. Well, it started as a 110 page book, it became uh, 118 pages as uh, the next stage was to take the 110 pages done like this and then look at them and realize how well they worked or didn't work. Then I added more pages. I spaced some things out. I rewrote entire scenes. I gave pictures, two or three, uh, sequences, two or three pictures where I'd sometimes crammed it all into one picture and so on. So 110 page book becomes 118 page book. All the words are in the voice bubbles in a TIFF document. And each of these TIFF pages, which are A4 in proportion, uh, those A4 TIFF pages are the actual artwork pages into which I will drop the next stage, which is the pen and ink artwork. Now, I've not done any pen and ink artwork for the print of Denmark Street yet, so let me show you some I prepared earlier. This is the pen and ink artwork for Findlay Macbeth, which is 125 pages long itself. This isn't all of the artwork because uh, some of the artwork has been given to the investors who paid for the book. Um, Bristol board comes in A3 pages, so I did the A4 pages two to a slab. Uh, I then chopped them up in order to give them to their various buyers. So there we see Finley Macbeth uh, in its A3 artwork form, which becomes the A4 printed book form. And the artwork is dropped into the TIFF pages. Uh, that is stage one of how Uncle Kev is producing his new book and I can show you the very first bit of artwork that has been produced. And this is this pencil page here. Uh, rather randomly, I've chosen page 63 of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark Street, as the first one to draw. I start drawing in the middle of the story so I can start to get the style, start to get the feel, start to get up to speed, so that the start of the book doesn't have the uh, weakest, most unsure drawings in it. Um, and I might draw the end of the book. I might draw pages out of sequence. Although, uh, in the case of Finley Macbeth, apart from a small chunk in the middle and certain other random bits, I pretty well drew uh, all 125 pages in order. Uh, then I went back and redrew some pages later. If anybody's got any questions, you can tweet me at KevF Comic Artist, Facebook me at KevF Comic Artist. I'm also on Instagram, but I can't remember what on earth I'm called. Uh, KevFcomicArtist.com is, I seem to remember, my website. I really ought to double check these things, oughtn't I? So, uh, any questions you'd like to know about Hamlet, Prince of Denmark Street, in particular, come on, let's talk Shakespeare. Um, fire away. Uh, my next instalment, I'll show you me doing some drawing. Thank you.